Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us understand shift register and the different types of shift registers, counters in that asynchronous counter and synchronous counter. First one is shift register. What is shift register? Shift register is a type of digital circuit which uses cascading of flip-flops. Means flip-flops are connected one after the other that will be called as a cascade connection. And where the output of one flip-flop will be connected to the input of the next flip-flop. If we are going to connect a circuit like this, we are going to call it as cascade. One flip-flop output will be connected to the next one. The output of that will be connected to the next one. Likewise, we will be having a cascaded connections. They share a single clock signal. Means the clock signal given here for all the flip-flops will be same clock, which causes the data stored in the system, which will be shifted from one location to the next location. Now let us understand this shift register. In the block diagram shown here, we will be having four flip-flops. This is one flip-flop, this is the other flip-flop. Totally we will be having four flip-flops and output of the each flip-flop will be connected to the input of the next flip-flops. Correct? And the clock signal which we have given is a single clock which is shared by all the flip-flops. Right? All the flip-flops will be connected with a single clock. And we are assigning the data from the first flip-flop as 1010. This data will be assigned one bit at a time, means one bit per clock cycle we are going to assign a data and in the next clock cycles the data will be transferred to one flip-flop to the next flip-flop and finally we are going to get the serial output in the next four clock cycles from the last flip-flop. Now let us understand how this shift register is going to work. The two signals we need to understand here, clear signal and preset signal. We know that clear signal is the signal which will clear the output to zero and preset signal is the signal which can be used to make the uh, flip-flop output preset to one. Here in the circuit arrangement because of the bubble here for the preset as well as clear to the flip-flops this clear and preset signals are going to work for zero input. When clear is zero output will be cleared. When the preset is 0, output will be preset to 1. So we need to use the shift register in a normal way when clear and preset is 1, 1. Okay. Now let us understand the circuit working. Here we are passing the serial data. Means serial data in the sense we are going to pass 0 first and then 1 and then 0 and then 1. There are 4 bits here. We are going to pass these 4 bits in a 4 clock cycles. In a first clock cycle, we are going to pass this 0. Where this zero will be stored? In the first flip-flop here, the zero will be stored. In the second clock cycle, next clock cycle comes, we are going to pass this one. What this second clock cycle is going to do? We will be transferring the zero to the next flip-flop and in this flip-flop, one will be stored. This, this is why we are going to call this device as a shift register. This zero will be shifted to the next flip-flop and the new value one is stored in the first flip-flop now. And when the next clock cycle, this zero will be the input given to the first flip-flop. This one will be transferred to the next stage. At that time, zero will be transferred here, right? In the next clock cycle, one will be the fresh input. This one will be stored in this shift register. This zero will be transferred here. This one will be transferred here. This zero will be transferred to the last flip-flop. At the fourth clock cycle, we can observe this output of the fourth flip-flop will be having zero already. In the fifth clock cycle, again this clock continues. In the fifth clock cycle, this zero will be taken out already. This flip-flop will be having the next value one. One will be coming over here. So we are going to get one. In the next clock cycle, the next value zero is coming out. In the next clock cycle, again one will be coming out. This is how we can read the outputs. You can observe here how actually the shifting will occur. In the first clock cycle, we can consider as the zeroth clock cycle. Zero is transferred to the first flip-flop. In the next clock cycle, this zero is transferred to the next flip-flop and one will be the output Q3 and this zero will be at Q2. And in the next flip-flop, we are passing the next value. This will be stored in Q3. Similarly, the shifting occurs and the value will be available at Q0 at the fourth clock cycle or we say if you consider zero clock cycle it is three totally four clock cycles are required to store the data of four bit in the four flip-flops right you can observe 
four clock cycles are required to store four bit value now these flip flops will be having 0 1 0 1 like this at the output q3 q2 q1 q0 will be having 0 1 0 1 like this to take out the data means we need to read the data uh, available in this shift register what we are supposed to do uh, already this 0 is coming out in the next clock cycle 1 will be come out after the shifting in the next clock cycle 0 will be coming out in the next clock cycle 1 will be coming out finally we are going to get 0 1 0 1 as output you can observe we are getting 0 1 0 1 right 1 0 1 0 we have transferred so we need to read in the reverse direction so that the data what we have stored will be available to us and in the next clock cycle you can observe all the registers will be having 0 and the fresh data can be given to the shift register now this is how shift register will work next there are different types of uh, shift registers available one is serial in serial out this is what we have seen so far the uh, four bit shift register and we will be having serial in parallel out we will be having parallel in serial out and also parallel in parallel out this block diagram shows all the four uh, different types of registers uh, serial in in the sense we need to give the data serially suppose 0 1 0 1 is our input 1 first and then 0 then 1 and then 0 need to be given serially and that output will be taken serially that is serial in serial out if this data will be given parallelly like this 0 from here 1 0 1 parallelly to the four uh, flip flops we can take the output parallelly also that is parallel in parallel out okay similarly parallel in serial out is also available parallel input is given and serially we are going to read the data from the flip flops similarly parallel in parallel out serial in parallel out is also available so let us understand this one by one this shift register is serial in serial out register serially we are going to give the input we have seen this with 1010 example similarly here we are going to get 0101 as the output we need to read it in the reverse direction to get the output this is serially input and serially output the next one will be serial in parallel out serially we are going to give the data means 1010 0, 0 will be given with first 0 then 1 then 0 then 1 and we are going to get the outputs here right once one bit is uh, stored and the next bit is going to be stored in the next clock cycle in the next clock cycle 0 will be stored and the next clock cycle 1 will be stored now the flip flops will be having 1 0 1 0 all the flip flops are loaded with the data now we can take out the data from here itself right this reduces the clock uh, cycle requirement means the delay is less here this SIPO is faster in reading the data so this will be called as parallel out serial in we are serially transferring but parallelly taking the output from the each flip flop outputs next one is parallel in serial out we can give the data parallelly also at a time we can load all the flip flops from the outside world okay and we are taking the output one after the other this is what parallel in serial out parallelly we are loading the flip flop with the value 1010 like this or any other value so we are going to get the output first 0 and then this one will be transferred over here we are going to get 1 and then this 0 will be transferred we are going to get 0 and then we are going to or transfer this one and finally we are going to get 1010 this is how parallel in serial out is going to work and then we have parallel in parallel out also parallelly we are giving the input from these four uh, gates so here we are going to provide the inputs and parallelly we are going to read the outputs this is very simple only one flip flop is going to store a single bit there is no transfer of bits required here just we can load the data and whenever it is required we can take out the data from the flip flops there is no shifting is occurred here shifting data to left we will be having a device now it is used to shift the data towards left the data shifted from left by one bit at a clock pulse means there is a common clock shared by all the flip flops again this is a clock cycle we are going to provide four clock cycles are required here to transfer the data so suppose this is first one this is second one this is third one and this is the fourth flip flop the data what we are going to give here you can observe here data in 
suppose if we are going to give uh, 1 0 1 0 we need so we are supposed to give this one will be the input first one will be stored over here and output of this will be connected to the next flip flop input so one will be transferred at that time we are passing 0 right so again the output of this flip flop will be connected to the input of next so one will be transferred here at the time 0 will be transferred to uh, this this stage and the new one will be stored here again this bit will be uh, this one is going to be transferred to the next stage right now this will be having one this will be having zero this zero is transferred this one is transferred over here and this will be having zero at the output we are reading from the fourth uh, flip flop first we are going to get one and then in the next cycle we are going to get zero in the next cycle we are going to get one and the next cycle we are going to get zero this is how the bits can be shifted to the left side using this device then we have counters what are counters counters are the devices where the numbers are counted means if we need to count the numbers like 1 2 3 4 like this we can count how this counter is going to work means depending on the clock cycle suppose if we are going to give the clock like this in the first clock it will be started counting from 0 initially the counter output will be 0 in this clock it is counted to 1 in the second clock it is counted to 2 the third clock is 3 fourth clock is 4 so on it goes on so the counter counting the terms of n bits it has 2 power n different states means if the counter is counting from 0 to 7 0 to 7 we will be having totally 8 counts okay so how to represent this 8 2 power 3 means this is n so 2 power n different states are there means 8 states are there we require 3 bits to count 3 binary bits to count 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 it will count this is the meaning of n bits it has 2 power n different states the number of different states of a counter is known as modulus of a counter also okay the number of states the counter is going to count will be known as modulus of the counter and in counter uh, there are two types one is asynchronous counter in, and another one is synchronous counter this asynchronous counter will also be called as lip, ripple counter all the flip flops are not clocked simultaneously again counter also designed using flip flops so suppose a 4 bit counter is required we need to have flip flop 1 flip flop 2 flip flop 3 flip flop 4 and we need to give the clock signal to these flip flops in if it is an asynchronous counter we are going to provide the clock to the first flip flop the output of the first flip flop will be the input or the clock to the second flip flop and second flip flop output will be the clock to the third flip flop third flip flop output will be the clock to the fourth flip flop this is asynchronous counter similarly synchronous counter means we will be having four flip flops these four flip flops will be having a common clock signal if this is a clock signal we will be connecting the same clock to all the flip flops this will be called as synchronous counter now let us understand asynchronous counter asynchronous counter here we are using three flip flops means it is a three bit counter it will count from 0 to 7 or 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 we can expect a count here and the first flip flop uh, this flip flop will be giving the output there is a connection here okay this flip flop is going to give the output will be treated as lsd means least significant bit or also it is called as lsb and this will be msd means most significant bit or uh, most significant digit or it is less significant least significant digit okay q0 q1 q2 are the output of the counter where lsb is q0 and msb is q2 here this is lsb and this is msb this is lsb and this is msb okay and in the uh, truth table you can observe this is q2 this is q1 and this is q0 and three flip flops which are uh, connected with a clock signal you can observe here since it is an asynchronous counter clock will be connected to the first flip flop and the second flip flop clock will be the previous flip flop output and the third flip flop clock will be the previous flip flop output this is how the clocking method will be used here 
and it will be having preset and clear signals also okay and the output of each flip flop will be treated as one bit output of a counter in the zero clock we will be having zero 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 in the first clock signal we are going to get zero zero one as output similarly it takes seven uh, clock cycles to get one 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 as output now let us understand how actually it is it will be generated okay this is clock signal given to the first flip flop how it is going to generate q naught q naught will be generated like this the q naught goes high and then for for the full clock cycle it will be one and then it will be zero for the next clock cycle okay it is one it is zero so this will be treated as a clock cycle for the second flip flop this is the clock for the first flip flop this is the clock for the second flip flop and this q naught is also the output of the first flip flop and now this will be also treated as an output q naught and also the clock for the second flip flop and then this third flip flop will be giving the output over here okay this is how the output will be generated in the second flip flop and this will be taken as output q1 and also the clock for third flip flop and this this gives the output also that is q1 and the next flip flop clock is this so this is the third flip flop it produces the output like this okay now you can observe this is 1 this is 0 this is 0 it is available at the first clock cycle means in the first clock cycle we will be having 0 0 1 it is 0 0 1 this is 0 0 1 is the output in the next clock cycle we will be having 0 1 0 in the next clock cycle we will be having 0 1 1 in the next clock cycle we will be having 1 0 0 similarly 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 will be the output at the seventh clock cycle this is how it will count from 0 1 2 3 it goes on up to 7 this is a 3 bit counter so it, re, it it produces the output in 3 bits so the maximum value of 3 bit counter is 1 1 1 this is 7 so synchronous and asynchronous counter how we can differentiate those means with respect to the clock signal if it is a 3 bit counter we will be having 1 2 3 flip flops here also we will be having 1 2 3 flip flops and whether it is an synchronous or asynchronous will be depending on the clock signal if the clock is connected to the first flip flop and output is the next uh, flip flop clock cycle and output of the second flip flop will be the clock input to the third cycle this will be called as asynchronous the same clock cycle is shared by all the flip flop means this is synchronous right and the generation of count will be same in both the cases thank you